Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to talk about fractions and specifically, we're gonna talk about the LCD or the lowest common denominator. So you can see here, we have three fractions and we wanna add these three fractions up. Hopefully you know enough about fractions that um, you cannot add or subtract fractions unless they have the same denominator. So here we have 20, here we have eight, and here we have 60. So what we need to do is rewrite each of these fractions such that they do have a common denominator, i.e. the same number, down here in the bottom of these fractions, uh, which is called the denominator in a fraction. But uh, what you want to do is find the LCD. This is going to be the common denominator amongst these fractions. Now, we're not going to focus on actually adding up these fractions. We're simply going to find the LCD of these three fractions here. What is the lowest common denominator? Now, if you're saying, yeah, I could do this easily. I need a more challenging problem. Well, here is kind of like the next step I want you to take. So if you can find the LCD, tell me in the comment section the procedure. How do you find the LCD? Now, these numbers are pretty easy, but I can uh, certainly make this a much more complicated uh, problem. But better yet, uh, suppose you had to tutor someone and say, okay, here's what the LCD is, and here is how you find the LCD. So if you actually can teach something, that's a really good indication that you know that particular topic uh, really, really well. Okay, so I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step on how to find the LCD. We'll use this particular problem as our example problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that uh, in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer now. So what is the lowest common denominator? Here we have one over 20. Here we have the fraction three eighths and here we have the fraction seven over 60. The lowest common denominator is 120. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, okay, well, let's just go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and a few stars. So you can tell your friends and family that yes, indeed, you remember how to find the LCD. Now, uh, that's great if you, in fact, got this correct, okay? Now, uh, if you were able to get this correct, but you really put down like a procedure in the comment section, like, well, this is exactly how you do it, uh, you know, how you find the LCD, then that is, you know, like an A++. But here's the deal, right? Let's take a fraction like one-third plus two-fifths. So if I said, hey, what's the LCD? Uh, between these two fractions, probably most of you out there be like, well, I'm not, you know, uh, sure why it is, but I know the answer is 15, right? Now you're thinking of a number, uh, the lowest number, such that these two numbers go into that number, right? So that's kind of a um, yeah, one way to kind of describe or think of the LCD, but there's kind of a more formal definition and procedure for the lowest common denominator, okay? Now, this is really, really important that you master this dealing uh, with arithmetic, okay? Fractions with numbers, because as you progress on into algebra, maybe you're already in algebra right now, you need to know how to find the lowest common denominator of algebraic expressions, rational expressions, which effectively is using the same concepts that I'm gonna talk about uh, in just one second. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. Again, we're not going to uh, focus on adding up these three fractions. We want to just to uh, focus in on the LCD. Okay, so the LCD, lowest common denominator. So this fraction here, one over 20, one is the numerator, 20 is the denominator. And here, the denominator of this fraction is eight. And here, uh, the denominator of this fraction is 60. Now, clearly, these three denominators are not in common. What does it mean to be in common? Well, it means that they're the same number, okay? Now, uh, the first step uh, to find the LCD is to really obviously focus in on uh, the respective denominators involved, okay? So if you have three fractions, you got to consider all three of these denominators, or there's four or five fractions, you got to bring in the, uh, the, uh, the rest of those respective denominators. So I'm just going to list these out right here. So here's 20, here's 8, and here's 60. So the first step 
to find the LCD is you need to prime factor each of these respective numbers, okay? Now, how do you prime factor a number? Well, the easiest way to do that is using a factor tree. So I already did the work here, but let's go through this step by step because this is really, really important. All right, so let's take a look at 20. So factors of a number, okay, so factors of 20 are just numbers such that when you multiply those numbers together, you get back to 20. So 4 times 5 are factors of 20. 2 times 10 are factors of 21 and 20. 1 times 20, of course, are factors of 20. But what we want to do is to find all the prime number factors of 20. So you could do this uh, by just using a simple frac uh, factor tree. And if you've never seen this before, I have additional uh, videos on my YouTube channel. But I'm going to uh, highly recommend uh, you checking out my Math Foundations course. It's a little mini course that basically powers through all that important arithmetic stuff you need to know. Fractions, decimals, place value, percent, positive, negative numbers, order of operations, all that kind of stuff. So if you're getting back into math, that's a great little starting course to kind of strengthen these basic skills. But you should know how to factor a number. So 20, I'm just going to start thinking of two numbers that multiply. When I multiply them together, is 20. And by the way, you could go 2 times 10 here. It doesn't make a difference. You'll end up with the same uh, prime factors at the end of it. Okay, so I'm going to say, all right, 4 times 5, that's 20. Now, these two factors, if I see a prime number, I'm going to circle it. Okay, so 5 is a prime number, right? So prime means uh, the only factors of that number is 1 in itself. So I'm going to circle 5, and I go, okay, I have 4. But 4, I could continue to factor, so that 4 is not a prime number. So I'm going to break that down into 2 times 2. And 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to um, circle that 2 and this 2. So effectively, what we have here is 20 is equal to 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, 2 times 2 times 5 is 20. And here, we always want to um, express our factors, okay, when we have repeating factors here as a power. So 2 times 2 is 2 squared. So 20 is going to be equal to 2 squared times 5, which of course 2 squared is 4 times 5. So that works out. All right, so that is the first step that we want to do is prime factor each of these uh, denominators. So let's take a look at 8. 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. 2 is prime. 4 is 2 times 2. So 8 um, is equal to the prime numbers of 2 times 2 times 2, the product of those three prime numbers. So 8, uh, its prime factors is 2 cubed. Okay, so 20, its prime factor is 2 squared times 5. And then 60, we can break down, again, different ways, 2 times 30. Um, you know, I'm going to go 4 times 15. So 4 times 4, 4 and 15 are not prime. Uh, so when I factor 4, I get 2 times 2. Those are, of course, prime. And then 15 and 3 and 5. So these are all prime. So 60... OK, is equal to the pr uh, product of the prime factors 2 times 2, which is 2 squared, times 3 times 5. OK, so this is the first uh, step that you need to understand in order to find the LCD. Now, we did all the kind of the hard work here uh, in order to find the LCD. Now we need to kind of uh, do something with the result of this prime factoring. All right, so let's go down here and take a look at what we got. OK, so 20. The prime factors of 20 is 2 squared times 5. Again, you, you need to express any repeating um, numbers as a power. So 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So we need to express that as a power, 2 cubed. And 60 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So that's 2 squared times 3 times 5. That is what 60 is equal to. Okay. So now let's get into the fun part. So what is the LCD, the lowest common denominator? Well, the way you find the lowest common denominator, okay, and of course we have um, an idea of what it means to have the LCD, but the way you find it is it's the product okay, of all unique prime factors out of all the denominators here. So when we look at um, the prime factors, of, we have three particular denominators that we're looking at. Uh, three numbers, right? So let's just kind of scan around and see what prime factors we have. Well, we have a 5, and we have another 5 here as well. So 5 is a prime factor. And what else do we have? We have a 3, okay? So, and then we have right here, we have, let me use a different color, 
uh, we have 2. Okay, so we have 2 squared. Here we have 2 cubed, and here we have 2 squared as well. So what we need to do is to write each unique prime factor that we have as a product. Okay, so basically we're going to multiply each unique one that we have. So let's start off with the uh, most interesting one here. So that is 2, right? So here we have 2 squared, here we have 2 cubed, and here we have 2 squared again. So am I supposed to write 2 squared and then another 2 squared, another 2 cubed? No, all you need is a representation of one of these numbers. So we're talking about 2, but which one? Do we need 2 squared or 2 cubed? It's always the highest power. So when you have powers, you have to pick the highest power of that number. So 2, we're going to select 2 cubed. So that is going to be our first uh, number that we need uh, in our LCD. Okay, So that's like the hardest part. right? So that is going to take care of our 2s. And now we obviously need a 5. We have a 5 here. We need a 5 here. Do we need to put two 5s? No, we just need to represent that number once. So that would be a 5. And then I'm scanning through here. I'm like, oop, I got a 3. I can't forget that 3. So we'll put that 3 right there. So the LCD is going to be a product of all those unique prime factors. So 2 cubed is what? Well, it's 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. And 40 times 3 is 120. Okay, so this is exactly how you find the LCD. Now, you know, kind of going back to this little example right here, uh, one-third plus two-fifths, yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, I can do LCD. I can add fractions. I'm really good at that. But suppose I was like a real mean math teacher, and I gave you some crazy problem like this. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe uh, 7 over 905 plus 3 over 3,162, okay? Now, most of you out there will be very, very upset. Matter of fact, you might just stop watching any video that I might make. You might be like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not doing that because you gave me these really big numbers over here. I don't want to deal with that. I'll just get my calculator. Listen, I get it, but you need to understand, okay, how do I deal with larger numbers? Well, the only way you're going to be able to deal with it is to know the kind of procedure, right? Okay, and the procedure is, well, let me just start breaking these numbers down into their prime factors, and then I can kind of build my LCD and go from there. Okay, so again, if you need help with basic mathematics, especially fractions, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on fractions, LCD, LCM, and all that kind of stuff. But if you're looking for like a more formal way, I'm gonna strongly suggest my Math Foundations course. But if this little video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.